Hi, everyone. Back to Vicki here, speaking to you from the Seeds of Transformation Healing Center. It's time for Terrascopes. We're looking at the Terrascopes for the sign of Capricorn. Uh, that's Capricorn Sun, Capricorn Moon, Capricorn Rising for the month of January 2024. We have made it to 2024, folks. And it's a big month for you, Capricorn. <laughs> we have, uh, of course, the month starts with the sun in your sign and uh, and Pluto in your sign and ends with the sun in Aquarius and Pluto in Aquarius. So big shifts happening for Capricorn. Before we get to all that fun stuff, um, I just want to let you know that this reading is a general reading for the month of January for you, Capricorn. Um, but it is a general reading, so it's it it's just um, suggesting of possible scenarios. Uh, if you want to know something more specific about your own chart, I would suggest you get a personal reading. Uh, that's you know called a personal reading because that's what it is. It's very personal to you. It's your unique birth chart. Um, I do readings. I do do personal readings. That's why I mention it. Um, and it's a combination of astrology, numerology, and the tree of life, the Kabbalah. Um, the readings are very unique. They're very deep. They're very uh, detailed. I do record them. So uh, after the reading, you can download it from the Zoom uh, link. And I would suggest you do that because each time you listen to it, you'll hear something new and exciting. Um, and so if you're interested in that, there are links below for that. If you want to know what's up for the year for your sign, I do have... H a uh, reading out Capricorn 2024. You can check that out again. It's a general reading, but uh, you'll get some, uh, we'll talk, talk more about the, the shifting energies of the year with that reading. And uh, of course I continue to uh, every month do the taroscopes. Uh, so the other thing about these taroscopes is you may be more interested in the reading, the tarot reading, and you are in the astrology, it is time stamped, so you can skip right to that if you want, or if you want to go back and listen to the reading, or even listen to the astrology, it's all time stamped, so uh, you don't have to go through the whole thing if you don't want to. All right, let's get started, huh? All right, let's see here. Um, I am going to share my screen with y'all. <laughs> oh, listen to me. Being all fancy, fancy, fancy. So let's get to Capricorn because that's what we're interested in. And uh, come on now, Capricorn. Uh, as I'm doing this, uh, we're in the middle of a um, a nor'easter, so hopefully we I don't lose <laughs> my electricity. Um. I'll, I'll work for it on this end. It's not a problem for you guys. All right, we're looking at Capricorn. And of course, uh, as many Capricorns know, they are a cardinal earth sign. Cardinal signs are signs that initiate things. And of course, Capricorn loves to initiate businesses, actually loves to organize things and, uh, and structure things um, so that people can utilize their energy to the best of their ability, including them cells um you in fact your your mantra is i utilize and your ruling planet is saturn yep saturn lord of karma that's your ruling planet so let's take a look at um well actually let me go back here this is just a general uh look at the energies for 2024 and i i have this chart up because i want to point out that in 20 24, we move into a new vibration. Uh, we're in an eight vibration this year. That eight vibration is connected to the, the um, strength card in the tarot, which, as you know, corresponds with the sign of Leo. So Leo becomes uh, an important um, point in this um, in this year. Leo for you. Um, oops, sorry, Capricorn. I'm in the wrong, I'm going in the wrong direction. I don't know why I do that. Okay, Leo. <laughs> Leo for you, Capricorn, is your eighth house. And so there'll be a lot of energy in the eighth house. Now, this is as you sow, so shall you reap. And so the eighth house is the house of our shared uh, values. It's also the house of inheritance and house of um, taxes. 
And so all those things, um, uh, borrowing money, debt is in this house. This is a good year for you to evaluate where you stand on all those things. Make sure you dot all your I's and cross all your T's when it comes to the kind of paperwork stuff that I know sends my sends my brain into mush, but I'm not a Capricorn, <laughs> nor do I have a Capricorn rising or a Capricorn moon. Um, but uh, for you guys, I think it's it's important. And uh, again, we're in an eight vibration. This is located on the tree of life in the throat chakra energetically. And so it's about creative self-expression, which of course, what Leo is about, right? But it's also a balancing between breaking down and, uh, and, and, and um, cutting away the extraneous, and then also balance with building structures. Okay, there's a balance between growing and um, and dying. Really, you know what what is let go, what is what is created, and there's a balance between those things. In fact, uh, this particular path on the tree of life, energetically connected to the throat chakra, is also connected to your metabolism. So this is a time when we all really need to become aware, not just Capricorn, uh, but we all really need to become aware of, of our own body metabolism and how that's either working for us or working against us. So just something that just came to me. I haven't said it in any other readings, but uh, very, very true. Okay, so let us look at, I'm going backwards again, guys. Um, oh, so incidentally, as I'm doing this, Mercury is retrograde in Capricorn. I kid you not. You can't make this stuff up. Okay. I finally went forward. <laughs> Pretending Mercury is direct. In fact, let's not pretend. Let's talk about Mercury direct. Mercury direct happens on January 1st. We have a couple hours of a retrograde, but we wake up and we have Mercury. Mercury goes direct. Mercury's going direct in the sign of Sagittarius. That is your 12th house. Your 12th house is, you know, your connection to source, uh, the voices kind of in your head. Um, it's been very talkative uh, of late. And no, you're not crazy. Um, but um, there is that sort of small, still voice. And sometimes it gets crowded in there, uh, depending on how sensitive you are to um, the voices that are outside of your ego right? Okay. Um, we also have Venus make a last quarter square to Saturn, your ruling planet. Venus is in uh, Sagittarius. Saturn, of course, is in Pisces. Saturn in Pisces is sitting in that, that uh, third house of mind. You have Neptune there. Neptune's been there since 2011. Now, Saturn kind of moves through. Saturn makes things real, and Neptune is very imaginative, so you've been imagining a lot of things for a long time. Of course, you've been sort of taken up with Pluto moving through your sign uh, more than, than most signs. But um, uh, now with Pluto moving out of your sign later this, this month, um, perhaps you'll have an opportunity to make some of that, um, some of those ideas, some of those dreams uh, actually real as Saturn moves through that house. Now, Saturn's in there for uh, two and a half, almost three years. So you'll have plenty of time to uh, to work your magic, as it were. And um, Saturn is in the sign of Pisces, which has its own magical energy. Saturn and Pisces is a time when we all have to sort of come into uh, contact with our spiritual mission on planet Earth. So uh, you're you're very familiar with that, I'm sure. Now we have a lot of planets in um, your first house, of course, because this is the time of the sun being in, in Capricorn, uh, at least until the 20th. But we also have Mercury there. We're gonna have Mercury there. We have the sun there. We have Mars there. Eventually Venus gets there. So it's a pretty crowded house. This is a time when you are sort of deciding how you wanna project yourself out there, right? Um, Nobody loves New Year's resolutions more than Capricorn. 
Um, the, the rest of us, we usually forget them, but Capricorn being so goal oriented, uh, really sort of takes them seriously. And so, uh, have fun with that Capricorn. <laughs> On the third, Mars, the planet of energy, moves into your first house of Capricorn. Mars loves being in Capricorn. In fact, it's exalted in Capricorn. If you're a Capricorn, you may actually have a Mars in Capricorn, but you don't have to be a Capricorn to have a Mars in Capricorn. Um, and so this is really an ability to assert yourself. And not only does Mars love being in Capricorn, but Mars loves being in the first house. So this is like, this is the best for you guys. So, so we're really sort of like going for it, right? Um, we also have the new moon in Capricorn, 21 degrees of Capricorn, which is again happening in your in your first house. This moon is going to be trine Uranus. So there is an opportunity to really sort of move uh, in a new direction if that's what you need or uh, an ability to really self-express with Uranus in your fifth house in Taurus. Incidentally, the sign of Taurus rules the throat and rules the thyroid, which rules your metabolism. So just things to consider as uh, we move through this, uh, this time. We have a number of trines and a number of sextiles this month. All the trines are um, 240 degree trines, which means they have the energy of Sagittarius, the teacher. And so this is a time for all of us to learn from one another and to share our knowledge. And we know you have a bunch of knowledge to share. So don't be shy with sharing your knowledge because you're not only going to help yourself um, through comparison and listening to other people and getting their perspective and having... Maybe you need to make a few adjustments in your perspective, or maybe it's just telling you that your perspective is right on on, uh, on target. We also have a number of squares this month. The squares are all last quarter crisis and belief or consciousness squares. They're all those 270 degree Capricorn side squares. So there's this sense of taking responsibility for yourself this month as well, hence, the resolution, the happiness of the resolution <laughs> for Capricorn. Oh, goodness. So really, it's really a good month for you, Capricorn. I have to say, I'm really, um, I, you know, I do the, I do this and then I do the card reading afterwards. And I'm really looking forward to see what the cards have to say, see if they agree with these charts. I, that would be great. All right. So uh, we have on a uh, week two on the eighth, we have Mercury square Neptune crisis and belief square. Um, this can be somewhat confusing, but we're questioning what's real and what's not real, really. Uh, and what's been told to us and has somebody lied to us? Has those people in power uh, or who we as ascribe power to, have they been lying? OK, sometimes these people aren't in power, but we believe what they say. So we have to ask the question, are they lying to us? We need to use all our ability and, and our instincts when it comes to those questions. On the ninth, we have the sun make a trine to Uranus. Trines are flow. This is an opportunity uh, of illumination and change. And on the same day, Mars in Capricorn from your first house there makes a sextile to Saturn. In that third house, this is a uh, an opportunity to move in a more humanitarian direction. This might also be an opportunity for you to um, mend some fences when it comes to uh, your siblings or your neighbors. On the 11th, we have the new moon in Capricorn. Very, very exciting. On the 12th, we have Mars make a trine to Jupiter. This is very, very uh, energetic, a very, very energetic trine accessing that Jupiter in your fifth house of creative self-expressions. Chances are, if you have something to say, you're not going to be shy in saying it. Uh, but again, these trines are all those Sagittarius side trines. So it's not like you're just saying stuff to see what happens. You're saying stuff because you know and you see things. Um, 
that perhaps other people don't see. And so it's very helpful that you're saying something at this time. On the 13th, speaking of saying something, Mercury goes back into Capricorn. Now it had gone retrograde in December in the sign of Capricorn. I believe it was eight or nine degrees. It's going to take a while, excuse me, for that to move out, but uh, at least it's back in your sign. In your first house, you'll be expressing yourself and you've had some time to think about uh, all that introspection that occurs when uh, Saturn is retrograde. In fact, Saturn was, I'm sorry, Saturn, uh, Mercury was retrograde. Mercury had its uh, conjunction to the sun, its inferior conjunction, the highlight of the Mercury retrograde cycle at that first degree of Capricorn, which always deals with the responsibilities of leadership. That's what this, this symbol uh, implies. So uh, you've had a lot of time to think about how you have led, how you want to lead, what you think is going to uh, work better. A lot of this energy in that Capricorn first house, really nice stuff. On uh, week three, we have the sun make a sextile to Neptune. This is uh, illumination and conversation with our uh, higher spiritual self. It is also a push towards humanitarianism and aiding those who need the help. Hopefully, when January rolls around, we'll start to see the people who need it the most actually getting the help that they need instead of what's going on as I'm doing this reading in uh, the middle of December. All right, on the 18th, uh, we have Mercury make a sextile to Saturn. This opens the lines of communication. It brings structure again in the direction of humanitarian endeavor. Mercury then on the 19th makes a trine to Jupiter. Now this is a special, in fact, this is a special trine because as I do, I always do these readings, you know, ahead of time because I have to have them ready for the beginning of the month, right? Um, <clears throat> but today, there's that the this uh, Mercury waning trying to Jupiter. Uh, there are three of them. The first one happened December seventh. The second one is happening today as I do this, and the last one is happening on the nineteenth. And this is new information, or maybe not so much new information, but stuff that you thought you knew, um, that you realized that you were right about, perhaps. Uh, so lots and lots of information coming in. Uh, really through the period of December 7th all the way to um, the 19th, right? We have this trine, which is in and out of orb, but it's still sort of there holding it. And the trine uh, connects uh, both sides of our brain. So it's like we're working on all cylinders here, both our intuitive facility and our mental facilities are uh, top notch at this time. So take advantage of that if you can. Um, and we also have, on that day, um, Venus making the last quarter square to Neptune. Again, these last quarter squares to Neptune, first Mercury, now Venus. We're really questioning, are we being told the truth um, in, in this situation? So that's something to consider. Now, the next day, the 20th, is really the big day. That is the day that the sun makes a conjunction to Pluto in the last degree of Capricorn. Pluto's been in Capricorn since 2008, and since 2008, every year it makes a conjunction to the sun. And of course, it's in Capricorn, because that's where Pluto sits. Pluto's in Capricorn for many, many years. The sun is in Capricorn for a month. So we have this synodic cycle that begins the illumination of Pluto, the world soul. Now, Pluto is our unconscious desires, and, and the Pluto in the sky now is... Is, is the world soul, right? And then we have children born during this time and they become the Pluto in, uh, in Capricorn generation. Well, on the 20th, we have the last Sun-Pluto conjunction in Capricorn until the next time Pluto goes into Capricorn, which is 220 something years in the future. So we don't really have to worry about that. Uh, it's interesting that this last degree of Capricorn, and I bring it up because you are a Capricorn, but this last degree of Capricorn, this conjunction sort of puts a period at the end of a sentence. And yet we're not quite done with Pluto and Capricorn because in September, September 3rd, it's gonna move into Capricorn. 
stay in that last degree. And then by the by the uh, 20th of November, it's out of Capricorn and not in Capricorn for another 200 plus years. So whatever this conjunction and that happens on the 20th, on some level is going to come to a fruition or it's something's going to be revealed at the time during that period of time. So really pay attention to this day, both for yourself and collectively, I think it's really important. Then the sun moves into Aquarius, which it does every year. But then Pluto moves into, into Aquarius right after it. So we have this conjunction of the sun and Pluto in your sign. And then they both ease out into Aquarius. And it's in, as I said, it's in Aquarius till September. So we ha we've had a taste of this, this Pluto and Aquarius back in 2020, um, 2023, when it was there for I think a little, two and a half months or something like that. It went in at the end of May and it went out at the beginning of, of July. So we did have a taste of that. And it was really very different. If you go back and look at what was going on in your life or you look at what was going on during, in the collective, you'll see that it was quite a different story. Um, when we went back into Capricorn, it's like we went back into the past and we're reliving a lot of the stuff we thought we had taken care of. It's like we're reliving World War One in the Ukraine with with the uh, the kind of war that they they have to they have to have against with the with the uh, what are those things the things in the ground the moats no they're not called moats you know what I mean and then the World War Two with this like rising of 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 fascism and and um, and then there's always like you know are we in World War Three so there's all of this like but as as part what it felt like to me I'm like having a hot flash now uh what's what's what it felt like to me was sort of reliving and looking at the way we dealt with problems in the past and now as Pluto moves into Aquarius it's time for new solutions to old problems or just not have those old problems anymore because a lot of that old stuff is based on old hatreds and silliness and and inequality. And because Pluto, because Pluto is going into Aquarius, I think we're going to start to see uh, the inequality bubble start to, uh, to, we're going to finally have a bust, right? We're going to have another bubble bust and it's going to be uh, the inequality bubble bust. But we'll see what happens because we have 20 years to work with the, work this out. So just some ideas. <laughs> I guess 20 years we can go back and see if I was right. Oh gosh, I hope not. All right, so tw I mean, I hope I'm right, but I <laughs> to do it twenty years. Anyway, um, on uh, the twenty third, Venus moves into Capricorn. Interestingly enough, Venus did not move into your first house until Pluto moved out. Not that I can blame her. Um, and anyway, Venus likes hanging out in that twelfth house when she while well, she was in Sag. Anyway, Venus likes the twelfth house. Uh, Venus is exalted in Pisces, the sign of Pisces. So it's it's real, it's real okay with that 12th house. Although you can sometimes come to terms with how you undo yourself in relationships. That's never really fun. But Venus herself doesn't really mind being in there. On the 25th, we have the full moon in Leo. This is the second half of the lunation cycle. This is when things come to fruition. It's going to be happening in that eighth house. The eighth house is a water house. Sometimes it's hard to see what's going on in the water houses because they're underwater and, and there's refraction and there's all kinds of things, um, but something will be illuminated and it'll be around your issues of your shared resources, your shared money, uh, your shared body fluids, I guess, in, some, in certain cases. Uh, or we could have an inheritance or something comes to uh, a fruition at that time. On the 27th, the sun makes a last quarter square to Jupiter. Again, these are crisis in belief squares. The sun and Jupiter, the two largest things in the solar system. Please, uh, you have to watch that you don't think you can do more than you can or overextend yourself in any way that can hurt you. Uh, we also have Mercury conjunct Mars on that day in your first house, Capricorn, at 17 degrees of Capricorn. It's a new cycle for these two planets. It's a seed being planted um, in that first house of the I am. So this is about your mind and your actions on the same page. 
Week five is a nice week. It's the last week we're looking at. On the 28th, we have a number of aspects. Venus making a sextile to Saturn. These, This is great. This is, again, progressive change. Venus is our value. Saturn is the structure. How can we structure things so that our values are expressed in a humanitarian and Aquarian way? Now, Pluto is in Aquarius, so there's a little bit more of a boost for that. Mercury makes a trine to Uranus. Mercury is a lower mind. Uranus is a higher mind. It is connected. This is a time of downloads. This is also a time of if there was something that you needed to change your mind about, but you had trouble getting there, this is a day when it'd be much easier to move into uh, into move through change, I'll say. And then we have Venus make a trine to Jupiter. These are the two benefics. This is really kind of a nice time to just enjoy yourself enjoy yourself the next day we do have mars make a waiting trying to uranus again this is about action and it's about change it sort of lines up with that mercury um so whatever seed you plant with mercury conjunct mars um, on the 27th things are going to happen very very quickly after that because we have uranus trining that okay so um know what you're getting yourself into with that kind of stuff okay all right well that is the astrology cool 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 all right let me um stop the share and let's get on with the with the card reading all right we're going to use the good tarot it's going to be a good month let's use the good tarot let me get it out of the box here all right, what are we doing here? Things are like all cattywampus here. All right, are we good? Is everything going in the right direction? Okay, let's see what is up for you guys. Give it a nice little shuffle here. This is a deck by Colette Baron reed I like her decks. I like her work. I like the art. This is a very happy deck. I mean, there's issues, but the happy deck. Okay. We all have issues, right? Even the happiest of decks. All right. So we're at the uh, four of air to start with. This is about resting. This is a time of um, a, a certain amount of isolation as you start the month, uh, but it's it's isolation that you've chosen so that you can get your head straight, really. Let's see the challenges to that. Um, the King of Water. It looks like there might be somebody in your life, very emotional, very nurturing, um, that has... Uh, that in some ways is at cross purposes with you. Um, it, it, you know, it's the king of water, so it's likely a masculine energy. Um, for some, it could be a disappointment around uh, the political situation. Perhaps some of you are wondering what's taking um, um Joe Biden so long to uh, scold um, <laughs> or to take a, a stronger stand against what's going on uh, in Gaza. That could be it. Or it could just be like, you know, just a dissatisfaction. Like there's just something about that energy of the sort of masculine, nurturing father energy that uh, you're you're having some doubts about. Let's see what's underneath it all. Um, the Ten of Pentacles. You know, the other thing that this can be in, in, in a completely non-political situation is you might actually be missing your father. Perhaps you get, you've got a lot of really good, um, um, what's the word, advice from your dad and you're kind of missing that uh, or missing 
a, a an energy of um or maybe you need help figuring out how to structure your finances because the 10 of earth is underneath it. This is, this can be dynastic money, but it could be money from, um, you could actually be getting money from um, somebody passing, maybe a male um, sort of patriarch in your family. Let's see what's um, in the past. Yeah, the eight of water, you've had to uh, move away from something that uh, again, there's this sense of moving away from the fray, um, trying to find that which uh, feeds your soul, and maybe that's why you're in that four of of uh, swords energy. You're still in the process of really sort of. You're not quite ready or not quite sure of your next steps. I Maybe you're even trying to figure out how to be more compassionate um, and utilize your resources in a more compassionate way. Let's see what's in the sky. Uh, the tower. Oh, so the world's falling apart. Yeah, so the tower up there. Um, the sky card, as I read it, can be either messages from spirit or it can be what's going on in the outer world. Um, but the tower is about coming to terms with who we truly are. And the, any disruption that occurs is because we need to figure out, you know, who we are. Uh, we're, we're spirit having um, a human experience, right? We have in the, uh, we have some money issues here in the, uh, in, in the immediate future. I always see this as the, um, I always see this as uh, the month card, like the card for the month. And the five of earth is money worries. It almost seems like you're worried about family money here. Family money. Um, how it's seen from the outside, the nine of fire. This is a, in this deck, it's a little bit different. The nine of fire, this, the nine of fire in other decks is usually like having healthy boundaries. Um, but this is a little bit more like mystical, a little bit more of a mystical energy in this deck. There's a need for you to want to manifest spirit uh, or or manifest something that's in alignment with your spirit. Let's see. Um, yeah, um, it looks like there's an ending in your family. So the ten of ten of swords, something is coming to an end. Hopes and fears. Queen of air. This is justice. This is justice card. Wisdom. Utilizing your wisdom for just, just results. Let's see what the outcome is. Okay, the nine of earth. So you're going to be okay. Uh, you're going to be okay. This is a self-made person. This is the person who, you know, is in their garden, surrounded by the things they love. There's a certain loneliness in this. Um, and again, there's this feeling of not necessarily isolation in the same way, but, uh, not because you, you've been kicked out of anything, but because it's a choice you, you, you're choosing to separate yourself from something. Let's see what else comes up here. Um, the Hierophant. This is about listening to your, the still, small, still voice within. It's very possible, and uh, 
this, I don't know if this is for everybody, this reading will for a particular Capricorn here, but I almost feel like that there is a male energy that is emotionally unstable around you. And you've had to learn how to protect yourself from it, even if it requires you to have a, a, some money worries. Ultimately, uh, you're going to find yourself in a better position. So is this a husband? Is this a father? Is this a brother? Is this a, a relative? I don't know. Um, but in the out in the end, you really have to trust your own instincts and your own inner voice on this and isolation or stepping away from the fray when it comes to this energy is definitely something that uh, is going to be beneficial to you. We have underneath it all the two of air, which is about, it's about indecision or it can be, it's not so much indecision as knowing when it's the right time to act on the information that you're getting. We have the five of air. Yeah, you sort of, you're dancing around some difficult issues. And then we have the ace of, of swords or the ace of air. The decision is made, justice is served, that kind of thing. So what I would say about this is you're going to be fine. Um, if you're in this place of wanting to step away for what other reason, um, it's it's exactly what you need to do. It's exactly what you need to do. There's a lot of new beginnings with your energy this month because of all the first house stuff that's happening. And, you know, the first house is the I am house and you have to stand up for who you are, which is not really something that Capricorns don't do. Capricorns are pretty good about standing up for themselves. Um, but I think it's a little bit harder when it's somebody either in your family or somebody that you're uh, you know, would traditionally maybe look to for advice. Um, there's there's a lot of crisis going on. And uh, part of that is um, being an authority in your own life and trusting your own instincts on things. All right, let's do a Starseed card and see what the Starseed Oracle says for you guys this month, January. The thing is, you know, you can't, even if you care for somebody, you can't let them uh, put you in a bad position. Just a couple more shuffies here. All right. We have the blue flame it says spontaneous awakening, activation, integration time. Is that like hammer time? Do, 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 integration time. Sorry. Sometimes I can't help myself. Help me. I can't help myself. All right. Blue flame, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? This card, this is a card of awakening, awakening and energetic upgrades. Perhaps you're going through a period of spontaneous awakening, receiving visions, and having experiences that are out of the ordinary. In the West, little is known about the process of spontaneous awakening, and it can feel very scary when we're going through it alone. Elsewhere, they can, there can, um, Elsewhere, they can be seen as auspicious experiences, with those going through them being treated with tender care. The blue beings are thought to be activating beings with great potential for healing and upgrading our cellular structures. They appear in moments of extreme awakening, activating the physical kundalini awakening and deep cellular and DNA healing. Many people glamorize the awakening process. However, in reality, it's much messier and difficult than most of us believe. It is true, I have to say, from my own experience. Waking up is hard to do, but once you're awake, you can't go back to sleep, which uh, for some might be harder, but 
once you're awake, you're awake. You just gotta, you just gotta be awake. Okay, sorry. Um, we must first let go of what we think we know for sure and how we make sense of the world. This isn't easy. The awakening process, even when it's spontaneous, takes a considerable amount of time to integrate. An awakening without integration can leave us feeling very ungrounded. If you're in the midst of awakening, the process never ends. Treat this time as a deeply sacred, as deeply sacred, and give yourself ample space to ground and integrate the extreme changes you're going through. So that's kind of what the cards indicated. A lot of this sort of self-isolation, but as a process of uh, a newness in your being. Yeah, it helps that you know Pluto is is moving out of your sign because uh, it's been there a long time making big changes, and uh, sometimes the monster has to leave the room before you realize that. You've been changed and you're better off for it. So not that Pluto's a monster, but, you know, it's just sort of the thing I said. All right, guys, I hope you find that helpful. Like and subscribe if you would. As I said, if you'd like a personal reading with me, there are links below. Uh, you can give me a thumbs up or share this with another uh, Capricorn, perhaps, who might need to hear this. Um, that's that's um, that's great. And if you want to support my work in a more direct utilize my my talents um and i'll be happy to share with what i know uh, you can become a um a patron on my patreon page there is a link below for that as well so until next month have yourself a good one and i will see you again um in february or i'll see you in the morning when i do my astrology or i'll see you during the week when i do readings you'll see me i'll be around <laughs> Take care. Namaste.